Hello internet and video enthusiasts. I'm Nick Sanders. Welcome to my channel, Video Deconstructed. You are watching the very, very absolute first video and I'm happy you're here. If you hit the subscribe button, you could be one of the first 100 subscribers. This is a tutorial on Premiere Pro's auto reframe and how to fix a reframe that gave you a not so great result. Here we go. So here we have a sequence with some random clips. Um, all of them have people in them. One thing you should know is that Premiere's auto reframe algorithm is looking for hands and faces. That's what it's cluing in on when it reframes and you'll see what I'm talking about when we do this reframe. So to reframe the sequence, either the sequence has to be selected. So you can see the timeline here is the blue box around it. And that will allow us to get to auto reframe or you can also have the sequence selected in your project panel. You go up to the sequence menu, go down to auto reframe sequence, and then you have choices. You can change it to a one by one square, a vertical four by five, vertical nine by 16, or if you were starting in a, one of these other three, you could take it back to 16 by nine, assuming that you have 16 by nine aspect ratio footage being used in your timeline. Let's start off with the vertical 9 by 16 preset, and that will give us the most drastic problems, and you'll see what I'm talking about. Leave your motion preset to default, and you can leave the default don't nest clips. That's probably what you're going to want. And you'll see that the sequence name is defaulting to what we started with. Adjusting auto reframe is the original sequence name. It's just appending 9 by 16. If I were to choose one by one, it adds the one by one. And you don't need to duplicate your sequence. Premiere will automatically take care of that for you. And you're going to see up here where it will show up. So hit create. And it creates a folder for us. Uh, you might have seen over here on the clip, it was analyzing it really quickly. If you take a look in this folder, we've got a sequence called 9 by 16 has been appended to the original name. And it's automatically opened it up for us. And you can see we have a 9 by 16 aspect ratio here. If I drag through it, let's see what we got. First clip looks okay. Second clip looks pretty good. We get to the skateboarder. And then right there at the end, you can see as soon as our person gets out of frame, Premiere's like going off track. And then this one, we've got two guys sitting at a diner and another guy who comes up to fill the coffee and you can't even see him or what he's doing. That might be important to whatever story you're trying to tell. And then on our last one, we've got two people playing tennis and Premiere's gotten a little confused and didn't really do a great job on that one. So let's take a look at a couple of these. If we go back to our original one, our original sequence, there are three people in the shot, but only one is in focus. You can tell that the girl up front, she's the most important part of the shot. So Premiere has done a great job of isolating her and leaving the other two people out. In the next clip, we have a guy jumping with his bike and Premiere follows along perfect all the way out. Let's take a look at our skateboarder. It starts off good. We follow him up the ramp. He jumps, Premiere holds it and then it follows him down, and then at the end, Premiere pans away. So if you click on any one of these clips here and go to the effects control window, that's gonna probably be right here for you, but if you don't see it, you can find it under window, effects control, or you can hit shift five. And all of these keyframes were added by Premiere when you did the auto reframe. So we're good with most of them. It's only until we get right here. It's these keyframes that are the problem. So all you have to do is we can zoom in on this by tapping on the plus key. And basically this area is where it goes bad. Highlight these keyframes here and delete, I'm gonna zoom out by hitting the minus key. There's one more keyframe there to delete. And now when we play it through, 
good to go. This clip, if you watch the original, our coffee scene, our diner scene, the guy on the right comes up to pour the coffee and the other guy looks up and he probably says, thank you. So you might want to show a little bit more of what's going on. Let's play this all the way through. And again, if I click on the clip, you can see all of the keyframes up here that Premiere has added with the auto reframe. So we play this through and it, it jumps over to the back and forth here, not knowing where to go. Let's say in this particular diner example, you want to automate it yourself. You can just right click on the clip and say remove attributes and you can just leave everything selected. We're going to get rid of the motion, which is up here, and we're going to get rid of this auto for reframe effect that's been added. Hit OK. And now the clip is just sitting there doing nothing. But you can add your own keyframes up here, the same as Premiere just did for you automatically. So you might want to start at the beginning of this clip and you've got your X and your Y. If you slide the X to the left and the right, you can position things where you want. So what you might want to do is start on the two gentlemen here, set a keyframe by clicking on this position that put a keyframe right there at the beginning of your clip. And then right around here is where he's raising his head to say thank you. Let's say we want to stop right there. As soon as I click and drag on the X position, you're going to see a keyframe added. And you can slide over to seeing the coffee being poured. So now when I play this through, And if you want, you can right click on this keyframe that you added. And if you add ease in, it'll slow the pan down at the end. Then on the last clip, if we select it, and again, Shift 5 will open up the effects control window. Again, you can see all of the keyframes here that Premiere has added. And this is another one where if we play it from the beginning, we're focused on the guy and it kind of gets weird right there in the middle. So you have to decide how you want this to play out. He's the one doing all the action, but we want to get them when they do the high five. So this is another example where I would right click and remove all of the attributes. That's going to clear out the auto reframe and create your own dolly move by using the position keyframes. So if you drag through here, we want to be able to see him swing the racket and hit the ball. So we want to start maybe something like that. And then when he turns his head is when we want to start moving over to see the high five with his partner. Maybe right around here where you can tell he got the shot. We're going to place a keyframe. Then we'll slide over to the high five, and drag our X to center the two. And now when I play it, much better looking. Now you might have noticed that the camera move was a little stiff. We can do the same thing we did on the last clip by going up here, right clicking on the first keyframe and selecting Ease Out, and then right click on the second keyframe, Ease In, and now we'll play it one more time, and you'll see it'll be a lot more smooth. And you can always play with uh, when that happens. You might want to move this down a little further, see how that looks. There you go. Thanks for watching, and of course, click the subscribe button, hit the bell, click the thumbs up, thumbs down, start clicking on everything below the video for the best results. Save it, share it, show it to your grandchildren, all that good stuff.